just number one, I appreciate you giving the, a little bit of a historical context of what's going on with this, and it brings me to my first question for you. Uh, I've read all of the suits, and I've read all of the decisions, and I've read them multiple times. And so what I'd ask for, would you identify to us, would you, would you be willing to say that our estuary, our St. Lucie estuary, is a meaningfully distinct body of water from Lake Okeechobee? That's a very legal term. No, so I understand. would you <laughs> identify that Lake Okeechobee is a meaningfully distinct body of water from our lagoon? So not knowing the definition of meaning, meaningfully distinct, what I will say is the St. Lucie estuary is an estuary and Lake Okeechobee is a lake. And that's the problem with the St. Lucie estuary getting Lake Okeechobee discharges. It essentially turns it into a lake like. Which condition. one's fresh, which one's salt? Exactly. Which one's fresh, which one's salt? Uh, the estuary is a salty one. Lake Okeechobee is the fresh one. And you go back to that decision, the you know some of the several decisions that were referenced in, in your historic conversation, and that's a very important term, knowing that naturally the Everglade or the the lake flowed into the Everglades, but still. A, a decision for the fact that they are meaningfully distinct. And we're not even talking about the distinction of a freshwater lake to a saltwater estuary. So you can count on that's another conversation that we'll have that I will pin you guys down. You need to identify that Lake Okeechobee is in fact meaningfully distinct from our saltwater estuary because that has very specific legal ramifications that I think we need to, to go down. Uh, yes, I would ask one other thing and, and I guess I would ask for this as an acknowledgement, Colonel. Uh, actually, I'm going to give one other thing first. I'm going to give one other thing first. It goes to the, the plants and the levels of Lake Okeechobee. We all have been in, in this fight. We've been on periodic science calls. We've been on project delivery team meetings, dozens and dozens of us, all of them together uh, at the South Florida Water Man Management District, you name it. and. Colonel, when you give the argument of sloshing on the lake, and it's what you put in your letter to me in response to that question, I gotta say that I can't re recall you in any of the project delivery team meetings or in any of the periodic science calls talking about sloshing being a point of consideration specifically for the lake levels. I just I can't recall you ever saying that or anybody else from the Corps of Engineers <coughs> identifying that. So what I'm saying is I feel like you're bringing something new to the table right now to keep discharging water. And another reason that I say that is the Corps of Engineers put forward plan AA, BB, CC, AB, AD, whatever all the names of the plans were, right? We all remember the names of these proposed plans. They were all acceptable plans by the Corps of Engineers. Some of them were not chosen because of politics, but they were all considered acceptable plans. And if you go back and you look at plan AA, that very specifically allowed for a higher levels and for a longer period of time without any mentioning of what you brought up, sloshing on the lake, but it was considered to you an acceptable plan. It wasn't chosen, but it was put forward as acceptable to the Corps of Engineers for dealing with the water levels on the lake, what might occur with piping, what might occur with other, with other things. And I think that needs to be addressed as well. I'll get to the point that I want of acknowledgement, and that's this. I, I feel like you had a scientist come before you, present data, you had the city come before you and present uh, what they're working on. And I said it outside, <clears throat> I don't think there's an economist that could give you information on what it does to our community. I don't think there's a scientist that could give you information on what it does to the ecology of our water. And, and I don't think that there's a doctor that could give you information about what it does, the, the microcystin, the cyanobacteria, and everything to the health of us that would make you say, sorry, we were wrong, we're gonna stop this and we'll stop it for the rest of the summer. I, I just don't think that any of them giving you any amount of information would make you say, sorry, we're done. Would I, would I be correct in assuming that? There's just not a point. You're writing stuff down, but there's not a point that we can give you that you can say, okay, we're done. Well, I, I think it comes down to there's a lot of factors that go into decision if we're doing those releases. And so we're not just looking at just the environment. We're also looking at flood control. 
We're also looking out to see what's going on with weather patterns and what are they showing, you know, and that changes, you know, month to month. And what we understood six months ago is different than what we understand with the Atlantic hurricane season now today. And so, uh, but I, I would disagree with the comment that when you're particularly talking about does, does, does the health impacts of the, the releases not weigh into the decision, it certainly does. I think we demonstrated that last year uh, during this time frame when we were doing about uh, targeting 500 cubic feet per second. Uh, and we did acknowledge uh, through uh, the S80, and we did acknowledge when we saw active harmful algal blooms, uh, blue green algae blooms on the lake, uh, that we shut S308 Port Mayaka to not flow those through uh, while we, we saw visible blooms that were up on the surface. So we're considering a lot and recognizing a lot of variables in the system when we're making these decisions. Uh, I don't know if it exactly Pearl. gets to your answer, your question, sir. And then what I would say is, uh, uh, you know, SASH, a wave run up, uh, a, you know, uh, storm surge with, with heavy wind loading from one direction is the whole reason why the lake is not 20, or the, the crest elevation on the Herber Hoover Dyke is not 20 feet high. Uh, it's, it's, it's between 29 and 44 feet high for a reason, and it's to compensate for that, though we may not talk about it a lot. And we did. And, and to your point, I would never take away from you, Colonel, that you don't discuss and take into considerations health and, and levels. You take them into consideration. I'm making the point that I don't think there's a point that anybody can make today that says that you say we're done for the summer. We're going to stop. We're creating the conditions for toxic algal blooms. So we'll stop even if we're not literally sending the toxic toxic algal, algal blooms. And so uh, I'll get to the point of what I wanted you. I, I will hope that you will concede and it's important for Congress to move forward for you to concede these things like meaningfully distinct bodies of water. That's important to be conceded instead of fight on, instead of argue, well, I'm not sure if the fresh water is different than the salt water place over here that was artificially connected by man. It's important to acknowledge these things. So the, the point that I would love for you to acknowledge, and you said there are environmental impacts. Will you specifically say you are polluting our coastal estuary? That's important to answer. In fact, they are polluting our water. That, that matters to be said, and so I hope you'll concede that. Uh, what I will say is when we do releases, we're doing releases that are based on the authorities that we have with the system uh, that Congress gave us, sir. And I will tell you that there are water quality issues with, with, the, with the water that we are releasing. Uh, you know, if, if, if agencies want to designate that as, as pollution, uh, that's, that's not my subject matter expertise area, but I think it is clear uh, that, that phosphorus, that additional uh, turbidity in the water, uh, potentially if, if those releases are coming with cyanobacteria, uh, that, 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 is, that is poor water quality and it is having a negative impact on these estuaries. And I will certainly concede that uh, and have never, never shied away from it, sir. And I appreciate that, Colonel. Um, again, this Thanks. is important because you said the policymakers, you're operating under the laws uh, that, that exist. We want to change those. I work to change those. And I think you're, you're this close to saying that the Corps of Engineers is polluting our water. And I would love for you to say that the Corps of Engineers is doing what they are doing. They are polluting our water, and I would love for you to acknowledge that. Or I actually, I would ask Drew. <laughs> is the Corps of Engineers polluting our water? Yes, no so they, you know, the release decisions, you know, contain pollution, right? I mean, so it's this CNSF system, yes, the big challenge with that flow control system is it moves water to places that were in nature didn't. And that water is impacted by nutrient pollution, and it's in the lake, it's in the canals, uh, and there's no shortage of effort to try to figure out how to control those nutrient discharges. That I would ask, just just it's say yes it. Or no just say. Yeah. I'm a politician. Yes. Nobody likes I understand politicians. what you're saying. <laughs> Don't be a politician. <laughs> <laughs> yes just yes. answer it frankly, on the record. Yes, the core through discharges that are congressionally authorized or the the management plans <coughs> these are authorized. But you are in fact polluting our body of water. The pollution say, is good. Say, yes. you are polluting yes. our body of water. Just say it. Yes. 
acknowledge yeah. it. Uh, Congressman, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you I'm operating within my authority, and water quality is not within the, the authority of the Army Corps of Engineers. I'm not disagreeing with you, and I've already made my statement on what, what are the components of those, what the water that's in those, in those releases. So, let me, let me. Sure. so I, know you're, I know what you're getting at. The decision that the Corps is making is bringing pollution into the estuary. It is polluting the estuary. The, the, the Corps of Engineers didn't put the pollution in the lake, right? That came from society. That came from all kinds of activities that we're trying to control. So they did not put the pollution there. Uh, so it's hard to say just the Corps of Engineers. It's a big societal problem. But the Corps of Engineers the decision is taking water from a meaningfully distinct body of water and polluting a meaningfully distinct body of water from the lake. And these things matter to change the policy that yes, you are operating under the parameters that you can, but we can't change those parameters if you are not honest about what is taking place. Right. Thanks, Mark. Well, thank you, Congressman, for asking these questions. They're, they're very important. And